The advantage to whiskey and brandy and any other distilled spirit as an agricultural product was it was a preserved way to continue to make money off of your crop that you might not otherwise be able to had it not been fermented and distilled. That also allowed it to be shipped over a long distance. But in certain circumstances, a lot can happen to a distilled spirit between one place and another. As soon as there were American whiskey distilleries, whether we're talking about bourbon or rye or anything else, they were producing the quantity to fill them. Whiskey was shipped from the distillery to its destination in wooden barrels like this. Now, obviously we still would age our whiskey, but the difference is this would go to the saloon and you would take your jug or your flask to the saloon to get it filled with the whiskey. Now there's a problem with that, especially the greater the distance that these barrels started to travel on a steam ship or a steam locomotive like I just stepped off of. It is very easy to remove a bung from a barrel, siphon off as much whiskey as you might want, and then replace it with something else that might not be as desirable to consume. And I am not going to expound on what those substances might have been because I don't know how much of this evidence is anecdotal, but needless to say, by the time we got into the late 19th century, it was well known and well accepted that there was a high likelihood that whiskey had been adulterated with something probably not very nice. So this is the type of jug or flask that you would take to your saloon or your general store to have filled with the whiskey that had traveled over all that distance and take back home with you. In 1870, Old Forester decided to address these concerns about contamination and about adulteration. So they started to bottle their whiskey. That meant that it was bottled at the distillery and the product that you were getting in that bottle was not accessed anywhere between you and them. Now, this was not necessarily new. There were spirits that had been bottled for a long time over in Europe, like uh, gin and certain cognacs and things of that nature, but this was new to American whiskey. And it didn't take hold right away. Everybody didn't stop start doing it, but people comprehended the value of the practice. The more they started to start to emphasize the purity of the things that they were consuming. And so in 1897, the Bottled and Bond Act was passed by the United States government. Now, Bottled and Bond was not something that everybody had to participate in, but you did have your purity certified and you did get tax breaks for it. And so what the Bottled and Bond Act said was that the whiskey had to be produced by one distiller at one distillery during one distilling season, aged at least four years, in wood and bottled at 100 proof. And then if the bottling facility was separate from the distillery, that had to be disclosed on the label. So it's just a foregone conclusion to us today that we're gonna to go to the liquor store or the drug store or something like that to get a bottle of whiskey that has not been accessed between the distillery and us. But in the late 19th century, this was a new idea as far as American whiskey was concerned. Again, not spirits universally, but American whiskey. And so something really neat that Old Forester did a few years ago is they started putting out their 1870 original batch whiskey off of the same recipe that they first bottled back in those days. And so we wanted to feature that today, this work that this classic Kentucky distillery is doing uh, with their batch from their original bottling. So let's take a taste. You know, Old Forester, it's an old standby, it's a classic, and it's never a bad basic whiskey. But when I drink this, they've, they've really kicked it up a notch. Right on the front, you get you get a good hit of corn, which I love. I like to taste the grain uh, that the whiskey that I'm drinking was made from. And then that distinctive Old Forester taste, and I don't even know how to describe it past that. There is just a character specific to Old Forester, but it's smoother in this batch. And then as it rolls over your tongue and it finishes in a nice, creamy, smooth caramel. So this is a real treat that Old Forester has done for us. Um, a taste of the late 19th century of the Victorian period and a taste of the innovation uh, that makes us feel pretty safe about 
the whiskey that we drink today, you know, outside of drinking too much of it, we know pretty much what's in the bottle. And of course, now we have laws about what can go into bourbon. It's one of the purest whiskeys that you can get. So I really appreciate you being with us on the South Park City Museum series on the Victorian Bar Room. Again, check those links below to see how you can support South Park City Museum and all this great work they're doing. It takes work, takes people, takes money. Also, please support the Victorian Bar Room and click that like and subscribe button. Really helps us out and the bell icon to stay up to date on what we're doing. And check out Old Forester's 1870 Original Batch Whiskey. It's a nice treat and here's to you.